Hello and happy Bidoof Day. Of course, Bidoof is our Lord and Saviour. He is one of the best Pokemon of all time, obviously, so we have to make a deck around it. Now, I know I'm a little bit late to this, but got to show off the awesome Bidoof content that Pokemon have provided in the form of the coin, deck box and sleeve. So let's go and have some battles with an awesome Bidoof deck. And if you're not already, be sure to subscribe. I do post videos multiple times a week, some competitive, some not so much. Now getting into the deck itself, we of course have to focus on Bidoof. And there's not really one Bidoof which sticks out to me, so instead I've opted to go for the Bibberol. Uh, of course, since Bidoof it does evolve into Bibberol. But we have a variety of different Bidoof that we can focus on here. All the different artworks that I have that I really enjoy and like. So we have this one, it does have Rollout, and it's uh, looking pretty cute there. We have this one, not a huge fan of this one, but it is reasonable artwork. And it does have the Scrunge attack can make it invincible because Bidoof is that strong it can be invincible. We do also have this kind of half art one which uh, I really do love this one. I think it was over the moon when I seen this one in the set all those years back when this was released. Always going to be a favourite Bidoof right here. And then we also have this Bidoof with Hyper Fang which is a uh, pretty reasonable kind of in its natural habitat where there which is very good but of course we are going to be mainly attacking with Bibberol as it does have the continuous headbutt attack which deals 80 damage for each head that we're able to flip so you can really have infinite damage with this but on the flip side you can also immediately flip tails which means you're not going to be dealing any damage which really plays into the meme which <laughs> Bidoof has built up so that's the whole concept that we're going to be focusing on here. We have the Victini in here for Victory Star. Getting to reflip is going to be crucial to try and get some damage out. And I know ADP makes everything better but we also have to remember that Bidoof needs all the help that it can get. So I have the ADP package in here just in case we want to try and take some extra prizes but as you'll see we are really focused on the Bidoof and Bibberol line. All of the stuff is just consistency to try and get that engine going. Recycling our energy, since we do have the triple acceleration energy, we can use that continuous headbutt in one turn of attachments, and then reuse that energy with the likes of Special Charge, and also reusing our Pokemon with Super Rod here. So lots of recycling and consistency, things like Nest Bone, Ultra Ball of course, the standard stuff that you'll get in an expanded deck, but we got to just focus on the start of the show here, which is all of these different Bidoofs. So let me know what you guys have done for Bidoof Day. And of course, let's get into the matches, see if we can get any wins with Continuous Headbutt. It's going to be a very similar video to the Willard video that I did recently. So if you've not checked that one out and you want some more raging juicing decks and coin flip decks, I'll leave that down in the description. But for now, let's get into the matches. Going into our first game here, we do have a pretty good start as we did start off with two Bidoof and we got the ADP in the active spot. This hand isn't up to much though, so I think I will just pass it over to my opponent. There's not really anything that we need to dig for on the first turn after home. We're just looking for that turn to uh, alter creation GX attack, of course. So we will be digging for the double dragon energy on the next turn. Nothing else to go for here. My opponent does have the Mew and Mewtwo tag team. They did also use a town map. We see them with the other tag team there, the Dusk Noir and uh, whatever, you know, Trevenant and the Dusk Noir, that's the one. And we do have a decent about, amount of search here, so let's go ahead and play all of this out. Let's get another Bidoof. We need to establish the Bidoof army. Unfortunately, we have prized our Oracorio along with a Victini, which is going to give us some trouble, I reckon, but we do have this Ultra Ball that we can play out at the very least to grab us a fresh hand here. Let's play the Ultra Ball first, discard two of our cards, and then we can go in with the Trainer's Mail. I think we'll grab the Crobat here so that we can get the most draw overall and still have the potential to play the Dedenny if we need to. There's a bunch of supporters here as well. We could take the Nest Ball if we need to. I think we'll just go for the N in case we miss the supporter then. It's good to have an N around. 
let's go ahead and use Dark Asset. We do get into an energy, along with another Bidoof, of course. So let's, or I, uh, Bibaraw, I should say, not a Bidoof. And uh, let's, uh, I will just discard this hand with the research and see what we get into. A bunch of reasonable cards here, but no double dragon energy, which is rather unfortunate, but we do get an attack off here. As we did get the Bibaral, so let's go ahead and attach a triple. And I could have used the energy a little, but you know, this is a Bidoof deck. We want to be attacking with Bidoof as much as possible. There's two heads, three, four, five heads. And there you go, that is going to be a knockout on the second turn of the game. 400 damage with the Bibaral and Bidoof. Especially Bidoof, but you know, you, you got to get the damage out somehow. And that is certainly how you do it. Turn two. 400 damage. Let's get into the next one. Let's go. We're starting off with a lone Bidoof this time around. We have the Evolution Incense. I think we'll go with the Trainer's Metal Ball, see what we get. We do have a Nest Ball, which I can play out. Definitely want to get us a second Bidoof. And let's see how many we have prized, or if any. We do have all of them there, which is great. We have the Oricorio. Unfortunately, we have prized a Victini once again. I think we're going to go for this artwork, the kind of half art. I do like that one. And we can pass over to my opponent. We've got the Bibaral in hand. So if we can actually get an attack off on this following turn. And let's see if we can get a win as well if my opponent doesn't bench anything. There's the Ultra Ball. So they are going to be getting a Pokemon. Discarding two cards here. They can grab any Pokemon they wish. But none are going to be able to withstand the overwhelming power of Bidoof. I can assure you of that. We see a tag team Pokemon in Greninja and Zoroark GX. They're going to use a Max Elixir and they do get the energy attachment onto there. Let's see if we get one from hand, but nope, not yet. We have a Quick Ball from them, discarding a Cynthia and getting a Crobat to use Dark Asset. They do have a pretty good hand overhaul, very consistent. Unfortunately, our hand is not looking too hot as we just have a bunch of Pokemon or ways to search out Pokemon. We see an energy switch from my opponent, which is an interesting choice, as I would have thought that they'd like to be attacking with the Zoroark and Greninja, but perhaps not. Let's see here, they are going to be using a Deadly Change to discard the rest of their hand, and they do have the Stadium there, which allows them to retreat for free on their Dark Pokemon, of course. They get a Dark Patch, which is going to allow them to put an energy onto one of their bench Dark Pokemon, from their discard pile of course because we do see the max elixir here which is also going to get a energy off the deck and there with that stadium they are able to retreat and knock out our Bidoof on their first turn which is rather unfortunate but we can promote our next Bidoof and go into the Bibaral hoping that we can actually get a big amount of damage here this is what we need to stay in this game let's put down the floatstone as well in case we get our hand shuffled and let's go flip some coins and instantly get a Tails. Yes, we would like to reflip, of course. And we immediately get Tails again. That's unfortunate. Definitely a, a bit of a letdown considering the previous game. So not going to be able to win this one, I don't think. Because our hand is pretty terrible. And that's just the way that it goes sometimes. With Bidoof, you got to try your best though. You never know. We do have a Nest Ball. We'll actually grab a Oricorio here. Never know, we might be able to draw something crazy. Let's see what we get off of the ability. We do get three cards here. We get the ADP as well as a Crobat of our own. So we can actually play out this Evolution Incense and not take anything from it. Using the Dark Asset to draw three cards. We do get a Supporter, which is pretty good, but we will be losing another Boberol, which is not ideal. Because we do already have one in the discard pile. But we do have to draw cards here, so let's go for the Ultra Ball. We can get ourselves a, another Bidoofy Boy. And we'll use our Professor Research to discard our hand. Let's see what seven cards we get. We do get the Double Dragon. So we can at least make use of our Alter Creation GX attack, which is very nice. We have the Nest Ball here, getting down a next Bidoof. And there's nothing else that we want to play here. So we'll just... Go ahead and use our attack. We're going to be able to deal additional damage and take extra prizes. And that is the main thing that we're looking for here is extra prize cards, of course. 
Sure, we'd only have to be knocking out two tag teams, but taking extra prizes is always helpful. So we'll go with that. My opponent getting down the Dedenny here so that they can draw more cards once again. Using another Dark Patch so that they can get that energy back out the discard pile and keep it into play. So they're doing the maximum amount of damage with that Zoroark and Greninja. Before, of course, using a Dedenny change, discarding their hand. As we can see, they're going to be attaching manually from their hand that energy card and here we go the big attack for 210 damage now we just need to find a couple of cards there is one the Bibaril let's see if we can get an energy off of the energy lotto just a double dragon energy which is not ideal we really wanted the triple acceleration energy so that we can get a good attack off here uh, I could discard this hand I could attack with the ADP either ones are not particularly amazing, so I think we will just discard this hand. Like I said, we're looking for that triple acceleration energy so that we can attack with our Bibarel, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Let's have a look in the discard. We do have a one in there at the moment. I'll actually play out this Evolution of Incense, and we can go ahead and see how many we have in the deck. Just a couple there. So there's not really anything else that we can do other than retreat our ADP so it doesn't get knocked out, I suppose. Give them a Crobat to knock out instead. And I kind of like that, so we'll go with it. And I'll also use our special charge now so that we can put one of these triples back into the deck. And we are also forced to put a double dragon into the deck. We'll pass over to my opponent. They can easily knock out this Crobat, but it gives us a couple extra turns to try and pull off an attack with Bibarel because that's what it's all about as long as we just attack with Bibarel and hopefully actually get some heads this time that would be great as well my opponent choosing not to do anything really as there's nothing that they actually need they just need to attack a couple more times and they'll be able to win this game very easily we do have another supporter again it's an N it's not really going to make much of a difference as they're already doing so much damage we'll play out the nest ball and it's just an ADP. Don't really want that on my bench, so we'll just discard this hand. And we do have the Oracoro that we can use to draw additional cards, but there it is the triples that we needed. I will be drawing cards as well, though. There's no reason not to. And we do get into even more special charges, so that's reasonable. We'll go ahead and retreat to our Vibaral. Let's see how many heads we can get this time. Please make it a good one. There's an instant Tails again. Of course, it's totally not rigged, I promise you, but there we go. We're able to get one head this time around and deal 110 damage because of that boost from Altered Creation, of course. My opponent using an Enhanced Hammer, not that it's relevant whatsoever. And let's see, the, uh, there's the Versus Seeker, so they do have the bosses ordered for game, which is rather unfortunate because we just weren't able to get set up, really. And that's a real shame, but... That's how it goes sometimes with Bidoof. Hopefully we'll hit more heads in the next game. Getting right into our next game, I'm not quite sure what kind of deck my opponent is playing. Certainly something that's going to be discarding cards, I guess, since they do have the new Articuno here, which is able to discard two cards and then draw a card. So they're looking to pare their hand down a little bit. And they are playing a lot of stadiums, so I'm guessing it's the new cast form from Chilling Rain, which is able to attack for free if you have 8 or more stadiums in the discard pile. We do have a reasonable hand here, nothing too crazy. We do Trainer's Mail and find a Floatstone, and we're just looking for our ADP. I think we could play down the Crobat, but getting one card or, it doesn't really seem great, so let's just research away this hand. Draw into a fresh set of 7 and hopefully find something a lot better. Unfortunately that doesn't look like it's going to be the case. So let's just retreat and hope that my opponent doesn't take a knockout I guess. Since we do really need our Victini around. And we do have more Bidoofs in the deck than we have Victini. So I don't really mind losing the Bidoof if it means that we get to keep the uh, Floatstone around. That's a very useful tool to be able to keep around. We see my opponent getting a Battle Compressor here, so that they can discard some more Stadium cards and hoping to find some cast forms, so that they can start attacking nice and easily. 
see here they do have the Galar Mine, but of course with the Float Stone we're able to retreat for free as it means that we have no retreat cost whatsoever. And the Galar Mine does increase retreat cost, but the Float Stone cancels it out as it gives us a free retreat completely. No retreat cost, however you want to put it. So very good there. It's going to hurt my opponent more than anything unless they're playing Float Stone as well or some sort of switch. And we see here they have the Deadly Change. It's going to be a very difficult matchup overall if we're not able to get it set up, but also because my opponent is a one prize attacking deck. So they are going to be hitting us and exchanging prizes fairly evenly with us. They see a Hypnotoxic Laser, which is interesting, looking to buff their damage a bit. And again, they are going to be discarding two cards to draw one. And we just see here, my opponent doesn't really have anything. They can't retreat that Orangaroo, and that's perfectly fine by me. As we can evolve into the Bibberol, and we do have the energy to get an attack off, which is perfect. Let's go for a Professor's Research. Don't really need to shuffle in, and it would help our opponent out as well. We do find a Nest Ball, which is going to be good. It's going to get us some more Bidoofy Boys. And we have an Ultra Ball that we could also make use of, which I kind of like right here, so that we can get a third Bidoof into play. We do have to lose some of the stuff that's in our hand. But we can always get the Bibberol Bank with our uh, Super Rods that we have in the deck. So I don't really mind losing one here. And we'll go ahead and get another Bidoof. And let's get an attack off. Let's see if we continuously tumble for the knockout. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're going to get an instant Tails. And it's going to be Tails both times again. This is just a repeat of our Waylord V video. If you've seen that one, I swear that video is just crazy rigged because we got tails all the time in that one and this is uh, definitely like deja vu right here we've got nothing going on for us apart from that first game of course where we got a whole bunch of damage but other than that it is all downhill from here folks as we have got constant tails even with the reflip of victini we've just got a whole bunch of nothing which is going to result in us dealing no damage and taking no prizes. Really showing that Bidoof is useless after all. Let's see what my opponent has. They are choosing to play a stadium here. They have the Peony, so they're looking to discard their hand and then they can search their deck for two cards. Whatever those two cards are is anyone's guess. Or maybe it's just going to be two stadiums so that they can discard it with the Articuno there. Very much looks like my opponent has a standard, mostly standard deck, but they are also playing a bunch of expanded cards like the Battle Compressor, of course, to help discard those stadiums as well as the Ultra Balls. So some reasonable includes from expanded, but mostly the concept is a standard list for sure. We see there they are taking some more stadiums. They got a couple heads on the nav there, which gets on the stadiums. And as predicted, they're going to be using the Articuno to discard the stadiums. Get an additional draw. And there's a Primate Wisdom to switch around some cards. Field Blower, again, discarding their stadium. That's going to allow them to retreat. But it doesn't look like they have a way to retreat, which is perfectly fine by me. And we have the Special Charge that we can make use of to put these energies back into the deck. And go for an Energy Lotto. There's the Triple. So we can go ahead and get that right back out of the deck, along with a Bibberol and then a Professor's Research in order to draw some more cards and hopefully get some more energies at some point anyways. We see we do get an ADP uh, along with a bunch of energy that we could make use of to tilt the game in our favour. So we'll hold on to those for now. Let's go ahead and nest ball. See if we have another Bidoof that we can get out of the deck. We do indeed. So we'll get that. And we'll just go for an attack. Hopefully we get two heads. There's one. And we do get a Tails. We do need to get two heads to get the knockout. So I am going to reflip here. And of course it's an instant Tails. So we're not doing any damage this turn either. Should have taken the 80. But like I said, that's not going to be a knockout. And against an Orangaroo, it's not going to be relevant either. So I would rather just reflip and try and go for that knockout if possible. And it really, really wasn't possible. 
So we'll just have to pass over to my opponent. They go again back over to us. They really have nothing going on. And it's going to be on us to once again find a triple acceleration energy. Let's have an energy lotto. There it is. We got the triple. That's going to give us an attack at the very least. And we can hold the rest of this hand once again. There's not really anything that we need to play out. So we'll just go for an attack. Continuous tumble. Of course we get a Tails, because why would it be anything else? Bidoof is useless, and we just get another pass into my opponent. Attacking for zero damage, getting this many Tails is uh, is really frustrating, man. It, I, I, it's kind of lost for words here, because of how frustrating it is, and really, the Waylord video is just flashing before my eyes, if you check that out. This is, uh, I think this is actually worse than the Waylord video. We at least got some knockouts in that. We even got some heads in that. Because <laughs> you get to flip a couple of times. Whereas with this deck, as soon as you get tails, you stop dealing damage. And when you immediately get tails, that means you're not doing any damage. But at least with Waylord, you do get three attempts. And you're going to most likely be guaranteed a little bit of damage from that. This is, uh, this is just on a whole new level and really is abysmal. Ah, uh, dear. So let's see here, my opponent does indeed have the float stone, they actually play one, so they're able to move their Orangaroo and go into a Pokemon that they can start attacking with, dealing 120 damage and taking out our Bibberol unfortunately. We can promote our Victini since it does have a float stone of our own, and we have the Oracorial that we can make use of, we've got ADP here, I will go in with ADP so that we get that GX attack off. Maybe even an ultimate ray if we need it, but mostly we're going to be looking to recycle those triple acceleration energy if possible. We get a boss's orders, which isn't going to be too huge here, I don't think. We could bring up the Articuno, I guess, since uh, it does have a 2 retreat cost, so I kind of like that. They might not have another float stone, you can stall for a turn, and then we can, uh, we can just go for the alter creation, why not? Let's go for it, see what happens. Maybe my opponent has another float stone, maybe they don't. And if they don't, then we should be in a good spot. There's a crushing hammers, getting ahead and removing our double dragon energy. A little bit of a shame there, as we could have got an ultimate rate off and did some significant damage to this Articuno. It does have 210 HP, so we wouldn't have got a knockout, but at least giving us the opportunity to two hit this thing and take some prizes would have been good. I think my opponent's probably going to be passing again unless they want to draw a card and use Primate Wisdom, but there's nothing that they really need here other than the Float Stone. Either that or they just give us the Knockout, which would be ideal. I would certainly appreciate that very much. Let's have a look at our discard. I think we did discard a Float Stone. We do. So we don't have any way of moving this ADP. But it looks like we don't need to anyway because my opponent is going to use Lysander and bring up our Bibberol, which is perfectly fine by me. Now we just have to find a, another triple. Let's go with an Ultra Ball. We'll discard the Denny and the Nest Ball. And then we can get a Pokemon out. Oh, we only have the Victini, which is unfortunate. And we also only have one Energy Lotto. So along, along with the Energy Count and the Special Charges, doesn't look like we're going to be finding an energy this turn. Uh, not a triple energy anyways. There's an energy lotto, so we're getting close. We could potentially find it here. Well, I guess let's go for an energy lotto. There's a dragon energy. That's not going to be what we need here. Really want to go for it and get an attack off into this Articuno if we can. So let's play the N. We are going to be giving my one a couple extra cards to work with, but we find the triple acceleration energy, which means we get an attack off, and we have the special charge as well, which means we can shuffle two triple energies back into the deck, which I'm absolutely going to do right here. And we can definitely get an attack off, which is excellent. Come on, continuous tumble, you can do it this time. I believe in you, Bibberol. Okay, that it's just it's nerves. Come on. It's nerves, I know you have performance fright, but it's okay, you can do it this time, and it's uh, it's not it's not good, guys. 110 damage is a little bit short of getting a knockout. I, I say a little bit, it's 100 damage short of getting a knockout. We're not going to be getting a knockout on the Articuno. But you never know, my opponent, again, 
they might not be playing a second float stone, they might be stuck here, and if that's the case, we can hit them for 100 damage again, but now there is the switch, so my opponent is going to be taking a knockout on our Bibberol. Our second Bibberol goes down, which is not ideal. We can promote our Fictini, and we do know that there are none left in the deck, so we really need to find a Super Rod and also get some energy back. I'm going to start attaching onto the ADP, I think, here. There's not really any other option for it. And let's go for the Trainer's Mail, hoping for that Super Rod. There it is. We did see a bunch of energy as well, which is uh, as expected, I will say. Let's get back to Vibro and also a Bidoof. We're going to need those. And we can Ultra Ball, just discarding this hand. We're getting quite low on cards, so I don't really mind, as we're probably not going to be needing the Research. And of course, we do have the Oracorial anyways. So we'll go ahead and use that to draw three cards. Let's see what we get. We do get a second Bibberol as well, which is cool. And let's Super Rod once again. We do have a second Victini in the deck. So I don't really mind about losing this one, as we can always get another one down. And we'll just pass into my opponent, I think. We already attached that double dragon energy, so we're not able to attack this turn with our triple. Bit unfortunate but we can attack on the following turn at the very least. Let's see if my opponent just has a switch or some way of attacking at least. Of course this uh, cast form here, its attack does mean that you can't use it on the following turn. So we could be in a good spot here for my opponent to miss a turn of attacking. But uh, am I missing something here? Ah, of course, they, they do indeed have free retreat, which is my mistake, so that's going to allow them to go ahead and retreat and get another knockout since we are weak to water so they're going to be able to easily knock us out there. Let's go ahead into a return with the top deck, the Victini, which is perfect. Love that. We are going to attach the triple of course and we'll go and draw three cards as always. Let's see what we get. Just the energy really, nothing else too substantial. And let's go for a continuous headbutt. There's one. That's, uh, is that all we need for a knockout? It, it is, so I think we're going to pass, uh, we're not pass, but we'll decline the reflip so that we at least take a couple of prizes. With that GX attack, we are taking two prizes rather than the regular one, and of course we do get to see our lovely Bidoof sleeves there, nice and big on the screen, which is what we're here for, of course. Now my opponent does have the boss's orders into a hypnotoxic laser and they're going to be hitting us for 120 damage so I really don't think we're going to be doing a huge amount here and they're discarding our energy so even if we're somehow stay uh, alive this turn which we do then we're not going to be attacking with ADP and we also don't have a way of switching either since we already have our other float stones or both of our float stones now in the discard pile my opponent does have three prize cards remaining. They can easily retreat into something else and get the knockout here. So, yeah, there's nothing really that we can do. We can just pass over it to my opponent. And that's going to be game for them. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm going to start doing my wrap-up here since they've clearly won. But, yeah, this was an extremely frustrating deck to play. But we at least got to show off the awesome Bidoof content in the form of the sleeves, deck box and coin which Pokemon provided. So I'll see you in the next video, as always have a good one.